Welcome to Sliver and Bite TV. Let's make velouté. For a more condensed version of this recipe, head to just a sliver of velouté. One of the five French mother sauces, sauce velouté, is a perfect base for leek and velouté soup, chicken and mushroom velouté pasta, chicken supreme, but my favorite, some pan fried chicken with velouté sauce drizzled over the top. Absolutely stunning. So let's get started. Place your butter into a fry pan. Let this melt, but don't bring to a simmer. Make sure you take it off or turn off the heat. Either place your chicken stock into a microwave and place on reheat, or bring to a very gentle simmer on the stove. Add your plain flour by sprinkling it over the butter. Make sure you're only putting in two to three tablespoons. And with a whisk, whisk vigorously to combine the two. This will eliminate any lumps forming. Once it's fully combined, you can add in another two to three tablespoons of flour. I will now bring back the heat, but only just below boiling point. As you can see, I've got it set to 80 degrees Celsius. And as soon as you see any signs of simmering, Turn off or take it off the heat. I only have roughly three tablespoons left, so I'll be adding the remaining flour now, but make sure you're quick in whisking it in. You'll also notice that at this point, it thickens to more of a paste. So I'll be moving from the whisk to the wooden spoon, which you'll see I actually do quite often, so keep them both handy. And at this point, if you didn't know, you've successfully made a roux, R-O-U-X. And this, added to any liquid, will thicken it up for you. And depending on how long you cook this roux for, you can go from a white, to a blonde, to a brown, to a dark brown roux. Make sure that you're monitoring the heat, only having it on when you really need it, which is, is very sporadic and it depends on the thickness and how dry the mixture becomes. Time to add in that warm chicken stock. At this point, I'm only putting in half of the chicken stock because sometimes you like to have it a little thicker, sometimes you like to have it a little thinner. So it's a judgment call as to how much you'd like to put in. As you can see, I'm just scraping off the wooden spoon and moving back to the whisk because I have so much liquid in there now. but you will notice that it rapidly becomes quite thick. And you'll notice as it thickens, I will move from the whisk back to the wooden spoon.
So this is a little thick. So I'm putting in half of the remaining chicken stock to see where this leads me. And at this part of the method, you have successfully made velouté. You can see just how thick the sauce is by dipping in a tablespoon and looking at how much sticks to it. And at this stage, this would be the perfect consistency to pour over your chicken or any meal that is ready to be served. However, I am going to intensify the taste by adding some more chicken stock and simmering it for a little longer. And I'm going to monitor just how dark it becomes by placing a little bit at each stage in a separate ramekin. This way I'll also be able to give it a little taste test. If you are going to try this, make sure you have enough chicken stock to add because essentially, whilst it's on the heat, you're reducing it down and it will just become one big gluggy mess if you don't continue to add some liquid.
I'm not sure if you could see it, but I did notice that it did go slightly darker. As you can see, I've added in a little butter. That is because it has started to get quite thick. So I'll add a little bit of butter and a little bit more of the chicken stock. But definitely a really nice dark velouté. Time to put the last of the taste tester away. And trust me, the additional time on the heat really makes all the difference. Whilst this sauce can be and is in its essence a sauce that you can make other dishes with, with the little bit of extra time it is great by itself. Okay time to plate up. I shallow fried a chicken schnitzel and steamed some Dutch carrots and some broccolini and then a generous drizzle pour of the velo tea and garnish with a few chives and also some white pepper goes really well with it and as you can see I've gone in for a second pour because it is really that nice I feel that this is an unsung sauce that seems to be at the bottom of the pile. However, I think it's rapidly becoming one of my favorites. Thanks for joining me. See you soon.